Uh -huh. No more bad shows for me on Undisputed. I'm sorry, I hadn't been on TV in a while. I don't mean to take over nothing, well, listen, but I hadn't worked on it. Finally. I can't believe I'm making this video. I mean, in our last video, I did predict at some point or another. Listen, we kind of all saw this coming. You know what I mean? We didn't see it coming this year, but we all kind of saw this happening, bro. Tire, I didn't think this would happen this soon. I didn't think Fox was just gonna give up on Skip this quickly, but I could understand why they made this decision. The numbers, so, man. We're giving away copies of College Football 25. All you have to do to enter is follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links to the giveaways are in the description down below. And now that we get all that out of the way, break. On everybody, you guys already know how I feel about Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, and Stephen A. Smith. I think they're incredible entertainers, very charismatic, and at the very minimum, know how of to course. tap into the emotions of an audience. Skip Bayless was a pioneer in this industry, whether you want to admit it or not. The man created the concept of the modern sports debate show. You know, the concept of uh, whatever this is. Last year with Tyreek Hill. Get right now! Hey, stop it! It right is now. my you turn. Right time out, time out. Or I'm sure you're familiar with this. Now, at this point, you guys recognize Skip Bayless as being a generational troll whenever it comes to all things sports. And sometimes his... Skip is not a troll. Skip is someone that actually believes in the shit that he says. He's not just saying it for a reaction. He knows he's going to get a reaction out of it. But Skip truly believes the things that he says. He's not just saying things for clickbait. He's no troll. He's something else seems a little out of touch. Skip rose to prominence by, for the most part, being the biggest LeBron James hater you've ever seen. And it's something that he's kept up up until recently. I mean, his trolling of LeBron James runs so deep that he's starting to become a Bronny James fan just to screw with his fans even more. I think Bronny would be pretty good. I've always gotten the feeling that Bronny had a bigger clutch gene than his father does. And while LeBron James Get fans... Yo, almost, man. Ain't no way he really said that, bro. Oh no. Nah. Fans have always taken this kind of personally. I always thought that Skip was playing a character. I didn't really think that this was legitimately who he was. But regardless of what you think about Skip Bayless's on-air persona, you have to admit that this is an individual that really knows how to put together entertainment content. Skip Bayless is credited for elevating Stephen A. Smith to the situation he's in now, pushing the executives at ESPN to give Stephen A. Smith an opportunity to debate Stephen Real shit, yeah. on a show called Cold Pizza. Eventually, Stephen A. Smith was promoted to becoming Skip Bayless's routine debate partner on ESPN first take and these two put together one of the most comical bits of sports television until 2016 and if you ever want to get a good laugh watch Stephen a smith and skip bayless yelling at each other over sports i mean here's an example you better be careful about what the word that's about to come out of your mouth don't be disrespectful you better you better be careful <laughs> and the crazy thing is i remember this episode this is when skip had said that tim tebow was a bigger box office draw drawer than kobe bryant how much of a fan i am of this I, it's like you hate this guy, but you can't stop watching him. It, it's just the weird. It's the weirdest psychological mind fuck ever, bro. I hated Skip, but I tuned into First Take every morning, bro. That's, that's, that are coming out of that's Whoa. 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 twenty-seven million dollars worth of nothing. And any normal human being at this point would feel comfortable. They would stay at ESPN where they're delivering ratings at a safe job, making Mickey Mouse happy. But that's not what Skip Bayless decided to do. Fox Sports 1 threw Skip Bayless a bag to leave ESPN and try to recapture the same magic again. Skip Bayless this time decided to tap Shannon Sharp as his partner in crime for daily sports debates. And you can make a legitimate argument that this was even better than first take. Shannon Sharp had a different type of charisma, a different type of charm that he brought to the table with Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith was loud, boisterous, but very, very very funny and the energy that he brought to the sports debate was a great compliment to skip bayless's calm yet savage sense of humor but shannon sharp would absolutely roast skip bayless at times he'd bring cigars and hennessy on set but there's a huge question of whether or not shannon sharp would be able to debate things that are out of the realm of football you know the sport that he became a hall of famer in and one of the greatest tight ends of all time in shannon sharp quickly dispelled that notion all shannon really had to do was become a gigantic lebron fan and next thing you know you could become skip bayless's number one public enemy on daily sports debate shows <laughs> <laughs> you know, LeBron got a degree in atmospheric science and meteorology. And the eye problem? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they would have an incredible run for about seven years, man. And in 2023, that's when stuff first hit the fan. I'm sure you guys oh, are familiar man. with the very first incident. The Baker. Baker Mayfield. And you yeah. can tell that Shannon Sharp got a little bit heated here, but I don't think it was... You never let me talk. You never let me talk. It's my turn. I'm going to let you know. QBR, 17.8. We're talking about yesterday. Uh, uh, I did look yesterday. Let, you get some no, no, no. Let me... I got the floor. 
Uh, because all you do is bring up those 11 games. All you do is go back and talk about when he was a rookie and won seven games. Mm. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about because I got the floor. Mm. Baker Mayfield is dead last in 2022 at QBR. Blah, blah, he's dead last. Blah, 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 blah. He's 57.8. He's 30, 30. Blah, 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 blah. You going to let me talk? Because that's you'll, what you If you'll stay on point on question. You never stay on point. Okay. I have to stay on point. Yo, what he said, you never stay on point? I felt that. That, those, those are words of a man that's had to deal with this dude for six, seven years. You never stay on point. What are you talking about? It's my turn. too far in comparing Shannon Sharp to Tom Brady. Still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Yeah, that's what you that's do. The point. That's what you do. I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bomb. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. I'm not in the Hall of Fame. See what you do? You take personal shots. No, I don't, I don't take personal oh, shots. You would take a personal shot at me. That, that was definitely a personal shot. There's no debating. Like, you, like, Skip has never even met Tom Brady. Keep, let's, let's keep things in this proper context. He's never even met Tom Brady. He's worked with Shannon for seven years. You would take a shot, you would take a personal shot at your coworker, someone that you know, to defend a man that you've never even met? The glaze was crazy. Diabolical glaze. Now look, man, on one hand, I could see it from Skip's perspective where he might assume that Shannon Sharp should think it's ridiculous that he's being compared to Tom Brady. You can't compare a tight end to a quarterback, and you can't look at a player saying you suck because you didn't play until the age of 45 like Tom Brady did. That's just insanity, and Shannon Sharp's longevity as a tight end in of itself is very impressive. Like Tom Brady, he also was drafted late in the NFL draft, later than Tom Brady was in the seventh round, pick number 192. Shannon Sharp's won Super Bowls with two different teams, like Tom Brady. There's some similarities there, but one's a tight end and one's a quarterback you can't compare a quarterback to a tight end i'm sure we all agree with this you yeah can't come out and say justin jefferson's better than patrick mahomes they play two different positions so i guess in defense of skip bayless you could say maybe he assumed that shannon sharp would assume that he's just being ridiculous but shannon didn't see it that way i guess this is what seemed disrespectful glasses back on can I finish? You disrespect him. It's, it's just oh, yeah. so. It's, so you, it's, you know what? It's beneath your you're dignity. Okay? I'm going to have at it because I'm going to have at you. Shannon Sharp would tell us in September of 2023 on Stephen A. Smith's podcast that this was the straw that broke the camel's back. As you reflect back on that moment, what goes through your mind and how much trouble was the relationship between you two in at that particular moment? A lot of that is my fault because there were times that led up to that that I felt that shots were taken and I let it go and he felt that he could go over the top in that situation. Whatever the relationship is, once one partner has no respect for the other, the other partner then in turn loses respect for said partner. Then I think it's only a matter of time because I felt in that moment he had lost all respect for me. He had no respect for me. This is undisputed, Skip and Shannon. This is not yours. So it really, really hurt me. Had I attacked him personally, live on television, what would have happened? And Shannon Sharp would then reveal that he and Skip weren't that close to begin with. Skip would get the work, I would get the work. I was in my dressing room. He was in his dressing room. It was really like a heavyweight fight. Mm. We barely talked. I mean, honest, honest to God, we might say hello. We're passing each other in the bathroom. Hello. That was it. It was not a carry on conversation. It was very little communication. In seven years, Skip and I, we went to, I think we had brunch once. Mm -hmm. I didn't develop the type of work relationship with him because I didn't get the sense that's what he wanted. And things would take a turn for the worse. Jeez, that's in depth. That's some real shit. And, and people have felt that way about Skip. That's crazy. The way that these guys used to clash every single day, five times a week, whether it was the NFL, basketball, even controversial topics, they never even had brunch once. Now, granted, now we don't always chill with our coworkers, but I've, got, I mean, damn, if this is your only coworker, you know, I mean, y'all in the to struggle together. You, you would think that you would build some type of camaraderie, some brotherhood, like. I have a feeling that's more so on Skip, and Shane is more so taking the approach like, yo, I'm just reading the room. This dude, he, he don't give me the vibe that he fuck with me like that. So I'm just going to act accordingly. 
I said, that's wow. Skip Bayless sometimes could push a little too far. I mean, a classic example of this was him calling out the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. I remember this. About I remember this. About his brother who took his own life because he had to watch his mother go through chemotherapy, which is a very difficult sight for any son. Oh, this is what Skip Bayless's take on that was. He's human. His brother was dealing with something that he took his life. I can't deal with this. I don't want anyone to know. You can share it internally. You can go see a psychiatrist if you need to. You can get all kinds of counseling. Right. I don't want my Dallas quarterback. Like, that's like, he, it was. God. Don't make me question whether you're made of the right stuff to stand up to that job, because that's a hard job he's got. Well, just a few months after his spat with Shannon Sharp over Tom Brady being a better player than Shannon Sharp was, Skip Bayless decided to tweet something that a lot of people found insensitive about Jamar Hamlin. And this tweet went absolutely viral. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. Now, I don't know if people took this as Skip Bayless saying, all of a sudden this game's irrelevant because so someone died or the outcome of this game is obviously irrelevant because someone almost died regardless it was enough for shannon sharp to no show undisputed which resulted in this uncomfortable skip bayless monologue i apologize for what we're going to set out to do here today if it obviously my partner shannon sharp is not here today i look forward to seeing him tomorrow but when shannon sharp would return to undisputed things would get awkward shannon sharp would open up the yeah. monologue and he would already get cut off by skip bayless there's been a lot of speculation of why i wasn't on air yesterday and i won't get into speculation of conjecture or innuendo but I will say this, in watching that game on Monday night, uh, what happened to DeMar Hamlin struck me a little different. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down. But I didn't want it. Well, yep. Time out, time out. I'm not going to take it down because okay. I stand by okay. what I tweeted. Skip, let me okay. finish. Me... All right, okay. Go ahead. No, you go. Okay. I mean, I cannot even get through a monologue without you interrupting okay. me. I was under the impression you weren't going to bring this up because nobody here had a problem with no, that tweet. No, clearly the bosses wanted you to offer explanation. So clearly, so no, they did problem. not have nobody. Let's go, Jay. A few months later, we got the news, and it wasn't really much of a surprise to anyone. Shannon Sharp was leaving undisputed. Now, apparently, it was Skip Bayless that wanted Shannon Sharp's contract bought out. He was literally bought out, meaning Fox Sports paid him to leave. And in my opinion, this was the craziest stunt that I think I've ever seen Skip pull. Because yeah. don't get me wrong, he's captured. Captured lightning in the bottle not once but twice, but trying to do it a third time when you're 71 years old and the landscape of social media has completely changed is a pretty tall task. I mean, Skip Bayless at that stage of his career is kind of like how Peyton Manning was in his final Super Bowl. Yes, he still had the mind to create a successful game plan, it was mainly his teammates that were carrying him. It was mainly the running attack of Peyton Manning's Denver Broncos team and their defense that won them that Super Bowl. And Hell I yeah. Newton being afraid of diving on fumbles. Sorry, Panthers fans. And at this point, Skip Bayless wasn't the young star that he once was. He it was just a very good compliment to what Shannon Sharp brought to the table. People tuned in for Shannon Sharp's quick wit and charisma. Skip Bayless's shtick was getting a little old, but we didn't mind it because these two complemented each other so well. But ultimately, Skip Bayless's hubris was his own downfall. Shannon Sharp's podcast numbers were higher, his social media following was greater, he was tight with a bunch of players in the league and players actually liked him, so they wouldn't mind making podcast appearances on Club Shay Shay, so from the very beginning, it was clear that Shannon Sharp was gonna be okay. But Skip Bayless, on the other hand, I mean, his podcast numbers don't do well primarily because he's reading off of a paper every time but regardless shannon sharp decided to double down on podcasting creating nightcap with ocho cinco in addition to club shay shay and he now makes regular appearances on espn's first take which by the way is kicking undisputed in ratings skip bayless's old co-hosts are teaming up against him and the craziest part is crazy that Stephen a smith even said that i'll always miss skip skip is my guy i love him i don't always agree with him we've gone our separate ways he's doing what he's doing i'm doing what i'm doing and i'll never root against him i'll always be grateful to him for what he has done for my career but smith also said in 2023 that at this stage and point in my life i'm happier without him i'm not going back that's not what i want anymore it has nothing to do with the debate show it's that i have other aspirations i've been named the executive producer of first take i have my own production company i have my own podcast i've got a lot of aspirations and i want to do late night television one day this is crazy everything that uh stephen a is saying you know what i mean granted he put in the work obviously stephen a is in a, a space all by himself but skip opened the door for him like espn did not even want stephen a at the desk with with skip every day and for him to now be an executive producer what executive producer first take i have my own production company i have my own podcast like insane how much this guy's taking that opportunity and ran production with it company i have my own podcast i've got a lot of aspirations and i want to do late night television one day potentially succeed jimmy kimmel if you talk about one final day with skip bayless i'd welcome that any day of the week just to pay homage for what he's done for me and to beat him again i've always beaten him he's never beaten me in a debate now keep that in the back of your mind really 
quickly because that's going to be very important later on at this point i'm sure you guys know what happens skip bayless tries to bring on a revolving door of panelists to yeah. replace shannon sharp including Keyshawn johnson who is supposed to be his new shannon sharp but with respect it's not the same michael irvin who's not on every day same with richard sherman rachel nichols paul pierce yo what is that is that lil wayne so it doesn't matter who the opponent is it doesn't matter the stage we just coach said win we gotta do a coach said win. but the show continued to decline in popularity and i'll well, stop watching this like shit it's officially reached its breaking point because we just got news that skip bayless is to leave fs1 undisputed following shannon sharp's exit after sharp left the show it took a brief hiatus last summer before returning with a new format that saw bayless acting as both moderator and panelist in debates with a rotating group of panelists that included Keyshawn johnson michael irvin richard sherman rachel nichols paul pierce and yo can someone please credit wheezy f baby please the new iteration of the show failed to capture audiences in the way bayless and sharp did during their seven year tenure together you don't have time because you guys talk too much and so i, I can't i'm running out of time here. To make matters worse, Undisputed suffered in the ratings following the move of first things first from early mornings to mid afternoon following the herd. Craig Carton's lead in show has not yet reached the metrics that first things first brought in as the lead in for Undisputed. Prior to joining FS1, Bayless was at ESPN for 12 years and starred opposite of Smith on first take before his departure in 2016. In 2021, he reportedly signed a four year deal with FS1 worth $32 million. Now, at the same time, FS1 may lose Colin Coward as well, whose deal comes to an end after the 2024 football season so colin coward literally has fs1 by the balls because that's like their last star and no offense to colin coward but he's not really known for giving great takes and then there's cj stroud rookie defensive head coach weird owner below average roster but he's not talented enough to overcome that so at this stage of his career yikes what's next for skip bayless now that he's a free agent well the fun thing would be for him to go to espn and form the big three on first take with shannon sharp and stephen a smith the thing is as much as i think that would improve the show i don't think stephen a smith and shannon sharp would go for that i mean they're doing just fine without it even though i think that skip bayless's annoying presence would significantly improve the show i can see him making appearances here and there just for the sake of it because at this point he has reached a legendary status whether you want to admit it or not but if you ask me i mean this in the most loving way skip you're 72 years old at this point bro just take your bag and take your wife ernestine and just travel the world man after seeing the cognitive decline that occurs once you reach the age of 80 i mean look at our president for crying out loud I, I don't mean this in a mean or derogatory way but he's clearly not as sharp as he was at the age of 78 as he is at the age of 82 and i think it's cool that he's still trying to work but hey whatever he wants to do i personally would not want to be leading the country at the age of 80 something but that's just me maybe Bruh. I'm crazy sack of here you've made millions of dollars at the age of 72 go on vacation relax a little bit ride off into the sunset there's really not much more for you to achieve here and there really doesn't seem like an alternative for skip here i mean i can't like think one cast is pulling in great numbers undisputed clearly failed without shannon sharp but both stephen a smith and shannon sharp wouldn't be stephen a smith and shannon sharp without you that's just what i would do that's the real shit a pioneer in this industry he's 72 years old at this point he's done his thing i would just ride off into the sunset and just enjoy life the way it is because i think it's ridiculous to pursue a brand new venture at the age of 72 but that's just me let me know in the comment section down below what do you think's gonna happen with skip bayless and what do you think he should do aside from that i don't know if you've heard but jordan addison i ain't trying to, to hear about this knucklehead yo i ain't go front i would welcome a return to first take with, with with skip shannon and steven a i think that would be i ain't gonna front that's blockbuster oh my god yo listen steven a and shannon is doing fine without him um both of them honestly look like they outgrew uh whatever shadow skip had had them in and skip got humbled when he fired shannon sharp i don't care what anybody says the moment shannon left I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I didn't know people was on that type of wave with me. But, but the moment Shannon was gone, I was out of there, bro. I gave I gave Undisputed one episode. And that's when I heard Sherman there, Keyshawn. I'm like, okay, the vibe is a little different. Let me let me tune in. Because I've always loved Skip's narrative and, and the debate channel thing. But, yeah, bro, the first episode, I barely got through 15 minutes. I'm like, this ain't the same. This ain't the same. You know what I mean? It just, just wasn't given. But um, I would definitely welcome a return back to ESPN, but I don't think they're going to go for it. But you never know, son. A big three? And, and Skip's toxic? Man, listen, I'd pull up. I don't care what anybody says. Skip, I've never seen anyone like him. I don't think we're going to get anyone like him again, bro. Covering sports the way that he covers them and, and creating these powerful debates that just get on your nerves through a television screen. I wanted to choke Skip. The amount of times I wanted to choke out Skip, bro when it's shitting on the bro like bro but nonetheless it just always made for good tv so skip bayless's career is officially over i doubt that and this man got 10 lives bro
but we'll see what his next move is i'm gonna holler at you guys next video this is microphone covering the career of skip bayless i'm your host gabos man but it's time to be alive shannon <laughs> can't believe he fired you dog that man cut off his nose to spite his own face and all this time shannon was the superstar tough a little bit of humble pie all that help